Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Air Hauler 2 and a little FSX with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. Well, today we are going to be doing something different. We're going to be taking a night flight in our Piper Comanche. We're going to be headed over to Fort Romeo 1, which is right here just south of Hattiesburg, uh, hauling a little bit of frozen fish. We've got a 3,000 foot landing uh, runway to be landing on, uh, which is over at Bass Memorial uh, in Lumberton, Mississippi. Uh, we'll do that in just a little bit. First, though, I want to bring you up to date on what's going on with the company and uh, walk you through a little bit of what I have been doing. Uh, first of all, if we jump over to information, you'll see that I am so, so close to getting to 40% uh, overall reputation. Uh, basically, I need just five more flights and I'll have that knocked out, which will mean at that point I can take out a loan, I can hire workers I can buy more aircraft all that good stuff uh, but actually I don't know that I'm really gonna need a loan because I've been quite working away and you can see with my finances I'm now up to four hundred eighty one thousand one hundred fifteen dollars and uh, down in the bottom you'll see that my factory is working that is because I have made a factory uh, as I told you with my company management factories are a great way to make a little bit of money and so I built one here in Gulf Shores uh, at uh, KJKA, and I am making automotive parts. Uh, it costs me $100 per automotive part to manufacture. I'm able to sell those locally uh, for quite a bit of money. And to sell that, all I have to do, I've got a thousand parts ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and come in here to automotive parts that are manufactured. I've got a uh, thousand, 13 of them made up. I'll move those over to my airport. Once they are moved in there, then I can go sell them. I'll come to jobs and cargo to do the jobs map, come down to commodities and you'll see automotive parts I can sell for $206 right here. And I will go ahead and sell those right now, make myself a little bit of cash. So we'll go ahead and hit the max button and that'll give me 1,013 of them to sell and I'll make 200,008 or $208,000, 678. Pretty good money there and uh, all I really had to do was fork out the money to buy the factory and then uh, just keep stocking it with uh, with the goods to manufacture it now I have found that I can make even more money if I fly those uh, machine parts over here to uh, Baton Rouge uh, where I can make a bit more money uh, on those parts um, so that's one thing that I did do. I flew a couple of routes over to Baton Rouge to make a little bit of money. I have also since uh, flown my Skyhawk over here to Houston, and it is now sitting at a Kilo David Whiskey Hotel, which is uh, David uh, Hooks Memorial Airport. And this is the airport I was telling you about. Uh, if you watch my company management, this is where I'm going to build my second base. And this is where I'm also going to build my watch factory because uh, it has all the materials that you want to make watches. And I, once again, I told you I could sell them here and make $618 uh, dollars per pound of watches. However, if I fly them down here to Galveston, I can make even more money. Galveston, uh, I was looking. Pilot watches sell for $644 a pound. Uh, so I can make a considerable amount, more amount. It's going to cost me right at about $315 a pound per uh, to ma manufacture the watches. So uh, I'm going to be looking at $300 to $330,000, uh, $330 a pound in profit, uh, which on a thousand pounds of uh, you know watches, that's a pretty huge chunk of change. So what I need to do is I need to begin my base so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna go ahead and start construction on a base now to begin a base in the game you have to once you've initially started with your first base to build an additional base you actually have to have a plane at that facility so that's the reason I've flown my Cessna Skyhawk over here and oh by the way the leather that I needed to uh, to start building watches I've already got uh, 800 pounds of leather on the plane as well because I loaded it up before I headed over here uh, I took a load of automotive parts of Baton Rouge, sold those, picked up some leather, came on over here. So that's what we've got going on there. But we're going to come over here and we're going to make ourselves a new base. So we'll go to bases. And we will come here to open a base. 
and we are here at Hooks. It's going to cost me $200,000 to open the base, and then my monthly rental on it is going to be $30,000, and that's quite fine. Um, the way I've figured everything up, it's going to cost me $200,000 to open the base. It's going to cost me $120,000 once the base is open to build my uh, manufacturing factory. Uh, and then it's going to cost me around $300,000 in materials to make the, the first round 1,000 watches to make. So if you do the math, it's just over $600,000 that it's going to cost me uh, to get this operation up and running. But that's not bad because the first batch of watches will sell and cover all of my expenses. Once that's done, I'm going to purchase my next aircraft. So uh, going to get the base open first and then get the new aircraft. So that's what we're going for right now. So let's go ahead and get this air, uh, airport made up. So we'll go ahead and just select next. Now, it takes about 12 to 24 hours to get a base built. You'll see that my new base is, is getting started. It tells me that it's $200,000. It tells me what the rent is on it or the, what my monthly expenses are. And then my construction will be created by about 7.43 in the morning. Uh, later on to what in two days so it's going to take me until the 28th to get that built that's sort of a bummer uh i've got to wait two more whole days before i'm going to be able to get this uh base up and running that's sort of a sort of unfortunate but uh i guess that's the price you pay in uh, expansion so i won't be able to use this base uh i'm recording this on tuesday morning so i won't be able to use it until thursday morning that's that's sort of unfortunate, but we'll go ahead and get it started. And I'm only out $200,000 right now as that is uh, being started. So uh, we'll come back to that in a couple of days and we'll get our base set up or our factory set up on there and uh, we'll get our operations up and running. So with that done, you're kind of up to date on where I'm at. You'll now see that my financials have dropped down considerably. Um, I'm down to, well, since I made quite a bit of money a minute ago, I'm down to, uh, let's see, yeah, well, 489,000, so that's not bad. We'll go ahead though, and we'll continue to fly. So let's go ahead and get in our aircraft and get a job done. Uh, we are gonna go from, again, from here to Lumberton. So everything is set up. I just have to go fly the job. We're gonna be in the Comanche. It is gonna be dark, so don't get scared, everybody. We'll go ahead and load on our frozen fish. Uh, we need about 250 nautical miles worth of fuel on the plane uh, so that we can get over there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put about 350 on there. That way I don't have to fuel up at the next airport. I can just go ahead and turn and uh, head on south and jump to my next place. So we'll go ahead and hit OK now that everything is loaded up. Thank you very much. Uh, it's going to ask me about my flight plan. I really don't need to file, file the flight plan. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick that into VFR uh, just to get myself through it. I will fly it. I am going to file an IFR flight plan uh, within FSX. I'll get that done and I will meet you guys uh, in the aircraft and we will get started flying. All right, guys, I've gone ahead and filed my flight plan for IFR to Bass. It should take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, somewhere in there, uh, depending on what kind of weather we run into. There is a bit of weather in the area as far as not so much rain. It's just going to be a little turbulent. There's a lot of wind up in the uh, upper atmosphere. So uh, as we fly, we'll probably hit a little bit of turbulence. Uh, the storms that are around they're offshore so i don't think i'm going to run in any real weather but i will get a quite a bit of wind you can see the wind stock standing up over there or wind sock standing up over there with about an eight mile an hour uh 10 mile an hour wind coming in from about 210 uh gusting up to about 15 so Takeoff might be a little interesting, uh, but I've done my pre-flight check. I've got my flight plan done, so let's jump in the plane and we'll go ahead and get ready to take off. Uh, it is night, so I am going to need some light here in the cabin. So we'll go ahead and turn our master on and um, we'll go ahead and look up here. And there is a switch somewhere up here. Oh, that's the red one. That's the white one. Turn the red off for a moment. 
we'll go ahead and go through everything. I have gone ahead and uh, done my fuel switches. Uh, as you can see, I've already done those during the pre-flight check. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my flaps back in for the pre-flight check. Uh, check, make sure my landing gear is all the way down. Uh, let's go ahead and balance our fuel load out and everything uh, before we get started. I need to lose these ladies. They're from my last flight. Uh, we're carrying, what, 268 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put 98 pounds back here in the back. Now, I would like to put these in the, in the back seat area here. Uh, but unfortunately, that's one thing I don't like about this plane is... I, you have to put things in a seat, right? Uh, like it was a passenger. Uh, the games, these planes aren't set up for cargo. Um, and so the minimum amount you can put in a seat is 100 pounds. So I can't really divide this into like 50 pounds or 49, 49 to balance the loadout. So I'm just going to put it dead center back here in the back at 98, and that should be all right. Um, you know, if I was flying this plane in real life, doing cargo runs with it, I'd already taken the seats out of it. The only thing that would be in here would be the pilot seat, and my load would be sitting in here strapped down to the floor, uh, and that would be the way that I would fly this. So I would be able to you know, push all the weight way up here, right on the beam, and everything would be fine, and I uh, wouldn't have any issues at all. But unfortunately, with the sim, I have to put it in a slot. Uh, and the only slot where I can really put it and it makes sense would be back here in the back. So, all right, let's go ahead and up the fuel. We're taking 32 gallons with us. So that's 16 per wing. That's good there. We have plenty of wool. Everything is looking good as far as that goes. I mean, I could always throw weight here and you know, I could always add 49 pounds to the pilot and 49 pounds to the passenger. Uh, I don't really like doing that, so we'll just go ahead and set it out that way. All right, with that said, uh, everything looks good. We'll go ahead and start our uh, startup procedures. Oops, that's not what I want to do. I want to go ahead and crack my throttle first. And push that mixture in all the way rich. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit that, get my fuel pressure built up go good uh, we'll come and squirt a little fuel into the engine get her primed up a couple of squirts is all I need I have flown this recently so uh, it's not really that cold of an engine uh, we'll go ahead and turn our magnetos on open up our port window here hear a little bit of wind coming in we'll look around make sure there's nobody around there's nobody here who am I kidding clear and start that motor up. Pull that motor down just under a thousand RPMs and go ahead and lean her out to 60%. That's pretty much what I do standard now for ground operations is about 60% and uh, it keeps my plugs from falling out. I do pretty good with that. All right, so at this point I can turn on all my avionics. We'll start firing up our radios and we'll get our DME turned on here. Good there. All right, and we'll go ahead and contact clearance and go ahead and get our flight plan cleared for IFR. six six seven so we'll set our transponder up I know it does it automatically when you do the read back but I, you know I like to do some things myself all Hyper, right we back and acknowledge I normally never turn that beacon off. I don't know why I turned it off. All right, so that is done. We're about ready to get started here. I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, traffic in the airport runway that we're going to take off on. Um, 
He's, I think uh, really my best bet taken off is going to be on runway 27 uh, because of the wind coming in. I think it's a better approach taking off on 17 than 27. So we're going to do runway 17 for takeoff, which will shoot us down sort of into the wind a little bit more. Um, It'll be a little more head on than it would be on 27. Alright, so 170 is going to be our takeoff course. And then we'll turn to the west after we get airborne and get stabilized. It could be a little bit of a bumpy takeoff, so be aware on that. Alright, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this overhead, turn on the red light. Go ahead and make sure that I get my elevators trimmed out for takeoff. That's good. And I've got my instrument panel turned on a little bit from earlier when I was doing my pre-flight. I don't want these to be too bright. Uh, in night flight, the less light in the cockpit you have, uh, the better it is. Uh, when I run big boats and I'm on the helm at night, we never have very much light in the helm. All the uh, instruments are turned down, radar is turned down. We have a minimum amount of light. It allows your pupils to open all the way up and lets the maximum amount of light, natural light, into your eyes. That way you can see at night, it helps your, your night vision. Pilots do the same thing. They tend to turn their cockpit lights way down, let the maximum amount of exposure of their pupil uh, dilate out and then uh, that way they can see the most amount of light so uh, that's the reason you'll see people with dark cockpits and very little light uh, in flight so I like to simulate that as well when I do the the flights so at this point uh, we are ready to go ahead and taxi for takeoff I'll announce my taxi all right so let's go ahead and get a little roll going here and we'll spin her around and then I'll turn my landing lights on I might flash them just to let people know that the planes moving uh, but I tend to like to get at least my initial taxi started with those lights off because um, this plane doesn't have a taxi light on it it just has the default landing light and the one thing about it is it's quite hard to see some of these runway markers um, with that landing light on it washes everything out there we go get over here and get lined up there's my line once i get on it i'm pretty good i can go ahead and turn that on but you can see how it just washes everything out and i think that's more of an issue with light sim and then a little bit with this plane as well but if it had a, a taxi light, I don't think it would be nearly as washed out. And then we'll taxi over to uh, runway 17. I've never really taxied over to it. I think I have to go way out here and around uh, to get to it. Mostly I use 9 and 27. I think one time I've taken off to the north on 3-5. But uh, I don't think I've ever taken off on one seven. But I should be able to go down here, go across nine, uh, and then turn and go up to one seven. Keep a little bit of forward pressure on my. Uh, on my yoke as I turn into the wind or turn downwind just to make sure it doesn't try to lift my plane up off the ground yeah it looks like the taxi lights are gonna take me right across this runway and over to the other side Here we 
go. Get turned on over here. All right, and then keep my upwind wing turned. All right, we'll hold short of the runway and then we'll do our run up and be ready to take off. All right, let's hold her right here. Good. All right, parking brake is engaged. We'll go ahead and rich in that mixture up. Bring her on up to 2,000 RPM. And then I'm just going to go ahead and check my oil pressure's good, oil temperature is good, suction's good, everything looks good. Go ahead and check our magneto for that 50 drop. We're good there. Good on that side. No miss, nothing else like that. Go ahead and cycle our prop three times to get that oil all pushed up in there. Alright, and the last time we'll pull it down and let it just make sure it's going to feather out. Good. And then the last thing, we'll check our carb heat. Looking for that drop in RPM or carb heat. That's good. We'll pull back down and bring that engine back down to about a thousand RPM. Yeah, 1200 is good. And we'll go ahead and announce that we're going to take off. And we're going to go departing to the west. Alright. Go ahead and get my autopilot cycled up and ready to go. Let it run through its test sequence. Go ahead and pull my flaps back one notch. And we'll go. Let's hope we have a pretty good, decent takeoff. It could get a little, like I said, it could get a little hairy here. There we go, all lined up. I'll just start giving it a little bit of gas. And uh, as we start rolling, straighten everything up. And once I get her good and straight, then we'll head her out. All right, let's rotate. Get her up. Good. Go ahead and get the wheels up. up flaps up all right we're good so far all right we'll go ahead and contact departure as we're climbing on up So let's get our bug set up for 320 to help me spot that just a little bit. Actually, my gimbal's a little off there. Zero is right there. So we'll roll her on around. And once I get that up, 
I will go ahead and lock my autopilot in, let it handle the heading. I don't see too much wind for right now, so I think I'm all right to get on the autopilot. It should be able to hold the plane good and steady. Not nearly as much wind as I thought was going to be on takeoff. Back down on the RPMs a little bit. Get that down to 2400 on the prop. Good. Alright, let's go ahead and let autopilot take over the heading. Should be good. I should have checked that whole uh, gyro drift, but I forgot completely about it. I do a real good job with making sure I set my altimeter, but uh, sometimes I forget to strike the D key and make sure this uh, the drift on this isn't messed up. I, normally that's something I check all the time. I was just looking at my numbers. I was like, wait a minute. I'm already at 350. That's not correct. All right, so we're up, we're climbing. I like to climb a little bit steeper. Actually, don't need to, because we're almost to four. So. We'll just cruise on up here, and then we'll level on out. I'll start backing out my, uh, backing my throttle out just a little bit, bring my manifold pressure down. And then nose on over a little bit with my trim. And uh, get this thing leveled off at about 4,000 feet. He's starting to dance a little bit on me. And get that nose down a little bit more. I had to go under it a little bit. And bring that altitude down a little bit. That's good. And I'll go ahead and set the autopilot to hold my altitude right there, just over 4,000 feet. And it again, it'll give me some visual cues to let me know what I need to do. All right, getting handed off again. I'm going to bring my RPM on my prop down to, uh, I think I'm going to go 20 square on this flight. So we'll bring the RPMs of the manifold to 20 and we'll bring our RPM down to 2,000. And we should be good. We'll cut on through and make short work of this trip. All right, adjust my altimeter. And we're good. We're up on cruise and we are headed on. Go ahead and show you guys what we've got as far as course. It's not much of a flight. Um, of course, ATC is going to toss me around like a rag doll. Hey, go to this person, go to this person, go to this person. It's almost like every two, three minutes the game wants to toss you around uh, to an approach. It's a little unrealistic how much they toss you around. You know, I'm going to jump on the GPS, and just about as soon as I jump on the GPS for my navigation, they'll take me right off of it. They'll go, oh, you know what? You're uh, 75 miles outside of your uh, intended destination. Let's go ahead and vector you somewhere you really don't want to go. They have a tendency of doing that to you. But as we come closer into the line, I will uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Altimeter changed a little bit there. See, we should be on a course heading of 317. I'll go ahead and adjust that out. So there's my 317. Just a little bit shy of it. 
I think that guy likes to talk just to hear his own voice. Hey, I'm talking. The game definitely doesn't want you to fall asleep from boredom or not hearing something. I had one the other day that wouldn't even take a breath. It was just constant flight, 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 flight. I don't know how you were supposed to respond to anything because the dude would never shut up. Cracked me up. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm intersecting my flight plan here. I'm going to go ahead and switch the uh, GPS on on my navigation. So the autopilot's going to follow the magenta line now. But, again, I won't be on it very long. Once I get over Mobile Bay, they're going to take me off of it. So. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look outside, see what we're looking at. A little froggy. A little foggy outside. Well, not really froggy, cloudy, I would say. It is quite a cloudy evening. Uh, it's rained most of the day today, and then um, a little lightning out on the horizon. But uh, nothing really major storms, so... Uh, but I did look at the radar, and I did realize it was going to be cloudy until I got past, like, past Cagula. Uh, and then once I get out that way, it's going to clear out. But if I bring up the... Um, if I bring up the radar, uh, we're going to see that uh, there's not really any rain in our in our path. Come on, get rid of it. You see the storms off the coast out here. This was that little bit of storm that was off my airport. But as you can see, as we get out this direction a little bit, it's going to clear up uh, quite a bit. And we should be all right. A little bit of cloud cover over our destination. Not too terribly bad. Well, a lot of cloud cover. Visibility, I just checked a minute ago. It said visibility 10 miles. So, let's see what it's got now on there. Uh, winds, 5 knots at 180. Visibility, 10 plus. So, we should be alright. I'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully that doesn't change. Broken ceiling at 3244. So, about just out of 3000 we'll start to be able to get out of the cloud cover. A few clouds at 1200 feet. Scattered at 22. So... Uh, it's not going to be too bad. All right, so we're cruising along, and uh, unless something changes, I'll catch you guys when we get ready to set up for approach. guys so we've got clears to go ahead and start descending down so we're gonna go ahead and back out our throttle just a little bit not too fast we don't want to put our motor into shock but we'll start descending on down I'll also nose the elevators down a little bit as well and we'll start making our approach into the airport 
Piper Diner, Guan Papa. Please think about your descent to 2,300. Really? I'm coming down at like 1,500 feet per minute, and he's not happy with that? They don't give you enough time in this really to react sometimes, I, th I feel like. It's set up to, it needs to see like 750 feet per minute immediately. Yeah, otherwise he starts griping at you. That's all right, we don't have that far to get down. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get in here and get landed. So we can get paid, right? That's what it's all about. Not as cloudy as I thought it was going to be coming into here. Piper Diner, one Papa. Turn left, heading 170. Descend and maintain 2300. Alright, so left to 170. Turn left, heading 170. Descend and maintain 2300. Piper Diner, one Papa. Start nosing up and putting a little bit of power into this thing. I'm going to bring my prop pitch in. And bring that nose up. There we go. Come on, don't don't seesaw. Don't go back up. Come on. Probably need to put my mixture back into Rich. Now he's gonna gripe at me that I'm not descending fast enough because I jerked a little bit too far back on the yoke. My that little catch that's in the middle of my yoke messes me up a lot when I'm trying to level the plane out and catch uh, catch an elevation. It does mess me up a little bit. I don't have that little bit of a touch, that little bit of finesse that I want to have. But here we go. There's 23. I'll go ahead and put the autopilot back on. And let it smooth it out while I look around and get everything else ready for our final approach in. Our fuel pump's on, all our lights are on. We just got to trim out here and get down to about 120 miles an hour. I just want to keep pulling that speed down a little bit. There we go. Go ahead and get a look at where we're at from the airport. Beach 101, turn right, heading 115. Turn right, heading 115. Beach 101. We're looking at 4. Four Beach 101, one. turn right, heading 145. Trim that up a little right, bit more. One, four, one, one, Come on, stop screaming at me. Beach one, zero, one. Contact Gulfport approach on one, two, four, point, six. Ten miles out. One, two, four, point, six, for beach one, zero, one. Piper Diner, one, Papa. Airport is at your ten o'clock. One, zero, miles. Turn left, heading one, four, five. Report runway in sight. All right, making our turn to one, four, five. There is the poppy lights, so we can go ahead and acknowledge the instructions, and then immediately tell him runway is in sight. Go ahead and put a little bit of flaps in to start slowing me down a little bit. Knowledge clearance. That and now it's position. Get rid of that. All right, so at this point, I'm stabilized out. I'm coming in at uh, about 110. I am going to slow down a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the autopilot and I'm going to start bringing my heading over a little bit more so I can line up on the runway.
start making my approach over until I start seeing those runway lights because at the side I'm at right now I can't really see them well, the weather just cleared up nicely in this area And at what we got here and we'll just set our heading bug for one four zero that's what we need to be heading in on all right I'm drifting down a little but not much Start lining up a little bit more. So we'll bring it around. Still can't see those runway lights. But it just tells me I'm not lined up on the runway yet. The closer I get to getting lined up on it, I'll see the lights. Uh, I guess I can see them now a little bit. to overshoot it all right so we'll make straight in on it a little bit of wind pushing me around go ahead and drop our landing gear and that's gonna make our nose go up just a little bit but then it'll slow us down and we'll start to come on down see if we can't get those poppy lights to show some love this is a fun airport to come into because I've done it a couple of times now and I happen to know that there are trees right at the end of the runway so you got to get this one a little bit right a little bit more flaps into it as we need to slow up and come on down a little bit I want to try to approach this right at about 90 miles an hour. Not much more than that. I'm going to hold off and put that last set of laps in only if I really, really need it. Get over here and get lined up. Bring that motor all the way, almost all the way out. Really drop it down some more. Get that airspeed down. Need to be about 90. Still really, really high. So, bring that nose down a little bit more. See if I can't get woed up. Last little bit of flaps in. Blow us down even more. Pull the power way out. Oh, I'm way high coming into this. Way too high. Way too high. Come on. There's some poppy love. I have to give it a little engine though. Keep that 90 mile an hour up. I'm seeing a little tree there. Right. Get a little more airspeed. Power, 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 power. Oh man, 
Not a great approach. Gonna get us in there though. Right over that tree. There we go. Uh, just enough to brush the wheels. Do 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 do. Oh, little seesawing. Oh, don't float too much of the runway. Come on. Ah. Uh, there we go. We're down. And a little break. Pull those flaps in. Pull back on the yoke. Alright, get her woed up. Well, again, not a textbook landing, but it works. At the end of the day, it gets us down and gets us paid. Go ahead and lean up that mixture a little bit. One of those off. Turn that off. Go ahead and spin her around here on the runway. Engine so it'll turn. And we'll head up here to the to the office and the hangars. And we'll park. So this may be one of the last flights I do in the Comanche, and I know I've only done a couple, but um, as I continue to move through the game, uh, I'm getting to the point where I've got enough money now to buy the Chieftain outright. The factories, eh, they're a little OP. They're going to produce too much money, uh, but I should be able to go ahead and get myself a Chieftain, uh, which I really want. That's like 2,000 pounds of cargo I can carry. Um, so I'll probably be doing that in the next day or so. Um, so the next time you guys see a video, it's probably going to be me uh, getting my check ride done in my Chieftain. Which I have mixed emotions about that. I really love this plane. I've had a blast flying it. I've done a ton of flights in it to get to where I'm at. and um, But I'm thinking my days in it are pretty numbered. Um, may hold on to it a bit and let it be used as a uh, utility for my employees but I will probably be moving into something a little bit bigger I don't know how much longer I'm gonna keep these small aircraft I have mixed emotions about them on one hand I want to have them on the other hand I think that they're probably too small but it is good to have a small plane that you can float into a into some runway, you know, out in the middle of nowhere whenever you need to. On these little grass fields especially. But that's what I'm hoping the tur the 208, the cargo master will be, uh, is that shorter runway. As long as you got about 2,000 feet of runway, you're pretty good with it. So I'm thinking that's what that plane's going to be for. So, all right. Parking brake is set. We'll go ahead and turn our radios off. Go ahead and turn this light on. That light off. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the flight today. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying their Howler series. Um, I do things different than some other people do them. But, um, you know, that's the great thing about the game. Everybody can play it in their own way. Um, me, I try to go for a more realistic approach to it. Um, so, my way isn't necessarily everybody else's way. 
All right, we go and pull that out. Put that motor down. But anyways, that's about going to do it for today. I'm going to go ahead and jump in and get paid on the um, software. But I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, until then, stay safe. Have yourself a great day, and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And of course, I am trying to get to a thousand followers on Google+, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.